Stacy, and it's Thursday. Welcome to Weight Loss Diaries. Today, um, for topic of the week is foods that are good for you or that people perceive to be healthy alternatives, um, and the excess of them too much is unhealthy. Um, I've kind of gone through the girls' little videos, and they've covered some of the, like the kind of the bigger basic type of ones, oils and some other additives. But here's one that um, off and on throughout my weight loss journey the last so many years, I think has been a key <clears throat> that has been a success for me is I have not fallen into the um, the marketing of all these little processed 100 calorie snack packs, um, you know, all these alternative or teeny mini Oreos for the real Oreos or, you know, all these different like little snacky type things. Because they say, oh, you know, it's only 100 calories, but if you actually really look, because I saw this on another program, if you actually really you read the back, you know, there may be two point or one point some um, amount of servings in there, but you're thinking you're only getting 100 calories, but really it could be up to like 140 calories. And, you know, you add that out to maybe having one snack or two snack packs a day times seven days a week, you're probably consuming an extra, you know, two or three, four hundred calories a week that you didn't know about that's hidden in there. On top of, it's still a processed food. No matter what, even though it's lower in fat, lower in calories, um, it's sugary and it's sweet, so if it's lower in all those, it's chances are it's going to be some type of artificial sweetener that is usually not very good for you and it's still processed um, you know everybody it's to each their own I'm saying they're n I'm not I'm not saying that they're not good and for people who are going from devouring a half a pack of real Oreos to the hundred calorie pack you know Oreos and that's helping them you know that's great that's what I'm saying it's all in moderation um, there are some people who can't control themselves they just kinda like buy that and substitute their little cookie urge or their binge and they still may consume two or three packs which you know overall isn't isn't the best for you myself like that puts me on a roller coaster I don't buy any of that stuff because if I have it in the house um, that's just how I am I mentally think you know, it's it's better for me. I can eat it. On top of, even though it is lower in calorie, it's a it's a trigger. If it's sweet or if it's a carb or something like that, it'll just trigger me, and I won't be satisfied with it. And I'll just keep wanting to eat and find more. So then I end up eating two or three of those hundred calorie packs within maybe an hour's time because I just haven't been satisfied, or the sugary and the carb make me want to have more. So um. So my food is kind of like all these pre-processed, little um, portion controlled, still the, um, you know, these cookies and calories and biscuits and, or, you know, brownies and things. I think, you know, the best thing for me was to, uh, like Denise does, is just to eat with a clean living, um, fresh, more fresh stuff, you know, or, or bake or make something there are so many low, you know, little muffins and things like that that you could you could have as an alternative that are lower calorie but are still sweet. So I think the best way to go is not to have that temptation of um, having all those little pre-processed things laying around. Um, you know, I know, I know, I may get flack because I've had people argue with me with this before because they're like, "Well, this is what helps me get me through." I'm not saying that you know it's a bad thing to have I was just kind of commenting that if you over excessively eat some of these snacks and things like that it's it's no better than if you were eating you know some of some of the normal um, normal calories like I know I saw something on Rachel Ray when they had the guy on there for this eat this not that and, and they were comparing things and he I and I can't remember exactly every word for word why it was different but you know the baked laid potato chips are no better than the regular potato chips and I think it was because of um it had higher sodium than the regular because it had to make up for the taste for the lower fat or something like that there's just these little tricks that these marketers do and think that you're you're really eating better when when overall you are probably better off to have an extra 60 calories with the regular you know Lay's potato chips versus these baked ones that had like more sodium and a couple other things that were worse. So that's pretty much my take on some of this processed and 
um, little snack packs of, um, you know, what people perceive to be very good for you, really, unless it's in moderation and very rare, you know, um, isn't very good for you. On the home front, on weight loss, I haven't been, I don't think I've lost any weight. And it's not that I'm not trying or that I am trying. This this uh, this week or two, I've been um, concentrating on exercise more than probably my food because once my exercise gets into check and I start doing that, you know, it all starts falling into place. So this last Sunday or this Sunday, I um, moved my elliptical up into my living room. I have like a, a little mini gym out in my garage, but it's so cold and things like that. We just we just don't get out there, and, and we pull a van halfway in, and it's crowded, and just excuses, excuses not to get out there. So my husband and I pulled it in, and we have a kitty corner in this one little corner by the couch facing our great big screen TV, and uh, he has to kind of start doing some cardio because of his um, cholesterol and stuff, so, you know, he's been popping on there. Um, I think I've got him up to like six minutes. <laughs> He's definitely not used to exercising. I'm, I'm, I'm making him build. So I started on Sunday, and I started at, I think I first went like 10 minutes, and the next day, Monday, I went 15, Tuesday, 17 to 20, and now yesterday I went 25 minutes at like um, on a three resistance, not super high, but not the lowest resistance there is. And my knee really hasn't been feeling that bad. I'm really surprised. I have been rubbing every night before I go to bed pure, a Young Living brand, pure um, peppermint ex, um, therapeutic, you know, um, oil. And it has really been helping, I think, because I wake up and my legs and my knee is not so stiff and hurting and such a sharp pain in it because I think it relieves the inflammation and stuff like that in it. So I've been doing some kind of medicinal things with my legs um, there. So I am, after I'm done with this video, I am actually, it's rest time and I got all the kids in bed. So I'm heading out to the elliptical to push at least another 25 minutes. And then, <clears throat> you know, from each day on, I at least want to be able to get a good 30 minute workout on there you know, every day. I am going to be ordering my, um, it's a trainer, a bike trainer to pop my bike onto that will give me some resistance so I can have my in my bike um, on an indoor so I can start uh, pedaling and building up some miles. So I'm really hoping this first week, excuse me, this first week of February is when I am going to um, then, you know, really start incorporating my diet because I should be on my 30 minutes a day elliptical run and then hopefully in the next week or so my bike trainer will be in and I can start putting mileage on my bike um, with some calorie restriction I think um, yeah I think we're gonna start we're gonna start seeing the scale go down soon so that's where I am and we will see you next week